Hello, party people. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a week of dinners. It might be more than that. You're in for a ride. The first one is my take on Cajun chicken pasta from Chili's. Let's throw up a picture from what of what it looks like from Chili's. It looks exactly the same, yes. So we're starting out with some chicken breasts. I got these on sale at Target. I love when they do that, throw the $3 off coupons on their chicken. I stock up, and of course, I'm gonna use my good old GFG. I hardly ever bring it out, and um, after I made this recipe, I realized why. It makes my chicken dry, okay? It's supposed to lock, knock out the fat, lock in the juices, I don't know if it still does that after however many years I've had it. So I just seasoned it with some salt and pepper and some chili seasoning or chili spices. Uh, you don't need to add that. It was on the spicy side. I also, while I was at Target this day, I grabbed some takeaway bread. This was garlic bread. It wasn't smeared out very well, <laughs> but the price of it was better than what it would have cost me to buy a loaf of French bread plus the butter plus you know, whatever seasonings I would have used. So moving on, I'm just boiling up some noodles. We've all seen it before. We've done it a million times. Something I will add is that my meals are fairly simple and easy. That's my go-to, okay? Mom of three slash almost four. Checking on the chicken, on the grill. Looks like it's done. Perfection. <laughs> Let's take that crap off before it gets dry. I'm also grabbing some broccoli and I threw it in the microwave, but you know what? I could have just chopped it up and threw it in with the noodles, which is what I did tonight because I'm making Alfredo sauce as well. Oh, I found this McCormick, McCormick, McCormick Alfredo seasoning. Um, I just found it randomly and I thought, oh, that's worth a shot. I'm using almond milk. You can use whatever milk that you have to use it. I'm sure if you used like cow's milk, the sauce would be a bit thicker, but I just thought it was fun to use this. It might be cheaper to just buy the jarred sauce slash might taste bad. I don't know, guys. You do what you want. Any kind of Alfredo sauce that you like. Oh my gosh, you know what that reminds me of? I have an Alfredo cauliflower sauce on my channel. I'll try to link that below. It was like a meal prep video I did many, many years ago, but it is so delicious slash healthy because the base is cauliflower. Anyway, I'm throwing all the stuff in the pot, the sauce, the broccoli. Did I cook chicken? Oh yeah, I cooked the ch <laughs> chicken, but I'll throw that on top at the very end. I'm taking the garlic bread out of the oven. Look how stinking delicious that is. So most of the like buttery, garlicky goodness stayed on the bottom, which kind of worked out for our family because my kids would rather have it like just a plain bread with butter on it. Look at that delicious meal. Yes, please. Better than chilies because I made it. So that's that. <laughs> the next meal is a recipe that I kind of shared with you in a grocery haul. And a lot of you were like, yes, please show us. And I aim to please. So here we are. It's a very, very simple crock pot meal recipe. You just need chicken thighs or any kind of chicken that you want. It could even be frozen. Who cares? Two cans of, of cream of chicken soup, one box of chicken stock or broth, and uh, one whole stick of butter. Yes. Sometimes I don't add the whole stick when I'm feeling healthy. <laughs> oh, but you know, it makes it taste better. Butter makes it everything taste better. My sister-in-law brought this over to me um, after I had Wentworth almost three years ago. Wowza, can you believe it? And I fell in love. I was like, this is the best meal. Please give me the recipe, and she did, and I've been making it ever since. So you just throw everything into the crock pot. You don't have to melt the butter. The crock pot will do all the work for you. Throw that cap on it, the lid on it, knock it up to high if you don't have a lot of hours or you can crank it on low if you have more hours to spare in your day. But this is the secret ingredient, the Reams Homestyle Egg Noodles. You can find these in the freezer section. For years, I made this recipe with normal egg noodles that you bought in, you know, where all the noodles are in the grocery store. And I asked my sister-in-law, listen, why does yours taste so much better than mine? <laughs> and she finally shared with me her secret. It is these noodles, so delicious. So once the chicken's done cooking, you can Take it out, shred it up, use your KitchenAid if you have one, which is what I normally do, but it was full of like some kind of cookie batter or something this day, so. <laughs> oh, I think energy balls. So I put my chicken back in and then you throw the frozen noodles on top. I almost did two bags. If you want 
a hearty soup. Throw two bags in there if you've got a bigger crock pot. And then you turn it, did I turn mine on low? I'm pretty sure I did. And cook it for two hours. So these frozen noodles do take a bit longer to cook. Again, you can keep it on high and it would take probably half the time. But this is what it looks like when it's all finished. Just perfection. I think officially it's called like creamy chicken noodle soup. I don't care. You can add veggies to this if you want to ruin it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I just like to keep it this way nice and fatty and delicious. So that's exactly what I did. Moving on to this recipe. Oh, I don't remember the name of this either. It's like some kind of salsa verde. I'll show you the recipe card in a second. I got it as an, a Publix apron meal one day when I was at the grocery store and I thought, yes, I'm gonna recreate this. And I'm pretty sure I had like severe morning sickness at this point, so I bought the ingredients to make it but never actually made it. Here's what's called almond verde pork with rice. And you can look up the recipe on the Publix website if you want to, it'll lay it all out for you or you can just jot down some notes while I make it. So you need this cilantro lime rice. So delicious. Cilantro, I know that's like, um, an herb that not everyone enjoys, but I sure do. So you take some salsa verde sauce, probably I think eight ounces or something, half the container. If you wanna go all out, use the whole container, you know what I mean? And then you take some almond butter. I didn't wanna buy almond butter, so I just used peanut butter. It kind of tastes like Penang, kind, well not really. It's like, it. no it doesn't. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. So throw in like two tablespoons of peanut butter. I don't measure, guys. Who cares? It's your kitchen. Make your own rules. Do what you want. I do have a food processor. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Got it for Christmas a couple years ago. Wonderful invention that is. But if you don't have one, just whisk it up with your hands. Who cares? If you wanted a little chunkier sauce, do that. Who cares? I have a pork tenderloin and you. I cut mine up in six sections. And you could probably cut it up into littler sections. Like I'm serving kids, you know what I mean? They don't care about the aesthetic of what it looks like af after it's on a dish, you know what I mean? So if I ever make this again, I'll probably just cut it up into bite-sized pieces because that's how I serve it anyway. I seasoned mine up with a little bit of salt and pepper and threw it in a pan with a little bit of all in it. Sometimes I get caught up with uh, like the rut of making the same dinners over and over again, the simple go-to meals, right? And I love Publix Apron, hashtag non-spawns, because um, most of the time the meals are very simple to make. You just need a couple extra ingredients and it really ups the wow factor. It will challenge your taste buds in the best ways possible. So. I have two peppers here. Use whatever color you want. This is just what I had in my fridge. Yellow and red, you know, if you've got green, throw that in there. If you want tomatoes, throw that crap in there too. Who cares? Anyway, I just chopped them up into bite-sized pieces. I'm flipping the pork over. Oh my gosh, it just looks so good. Once it's done cooking, you take it out and then what am I doing? Throw the sauce in there to cook. It's supposed to reduce a little bit, so I just let it cook for a few minutes until it thickened up like so and then you're going to throw in a quarter cup of chicken broth but I didn't want to open a whole thing so I use like better than bouillon I just use like a teeny tiny pinch with a quarter cup of water if you don't have chicken broth use water like you know what I mean who cares it does, it's not gonna add that much flavor it's a quarter cup you throw the pork back in there just to finish cooking because what we did before was just mostly sear it well, did we? I don't know. I think I cooked it for quite some time. And then I threw the peppers in there to get them soft a little bit. And that is it. You throw that on. Oh, wait. No, we've got peas. I know some people don't like peas. If you don't like peas, you throw in whatever veggie that you want or omit them all together. Again, it's your meal, your kitchen. You do what you want. And oh, yes. And the cilantro, my favorite part. It really makes the recipe. Mm impeccable and then you just throw all that over some rice and dinner is served look how delicious that looks want to come over and eat it for me slash make it for me again this will be on rotation again for me for sure um also with dinner almost every single night i make the same exact salad yes my family loves me so much <laughs> the spice of life is variety and I don't give it to them. So um, my salad's very simple. One heart of romaine, 
half of a cucumber diced up, some red onion, feta cheese, olive garden dressing, boom, you got your salad, <laughs> nice and simple. Almost every single night, people. Moving on to the next meal. This one is a no-brainer, no skill involved at all. <laughs> I actually used meatballs from Costco, and I used the spicy mango and jalapeno meatballs. And my goodness, guys, the caramelized onions are not that great, but it's worth buying the package just for these. They are on the spicy side, so if you don't like spice, stay away from them. If your kids aren't into it, stay away. So I'm just cooking up some good old rice, two cups of rice, because we could always use leftover rice, you know what I mean? So if you don't know, two cups of rice, four cups of water, it's a two to one ratio. Well, one to two. Okay, you get, you get it. You've made rice before, okay? This is very simple. You throw stuff, <laughs> throw the meatballs on a tray, throw the broccoli on a tray, heat it up, cut it up, throw it in a bowl, and dinner is served. It is that easy. It's like a 10 minute meal, especially on a busy weeknight. If you've got kids and after school activities and all that good stuff, it is perfect. Oh, you can throw some soy sauce on top of that. Any kind of sauce that you like. I like things plain. <laughs> Moving on to the next meal. Again, another super easy, quick weeknight meal. Uh, Semi-healthy? I think it's healthy. It's on a bed of lettuce. How can it not be, you know? So again, help from Costco love that place i threw in these mini tacos they're chicken and cheese tacos oh my gosh i was obsessed with this meal i made this video like three weeks ago <laughs> and i've been obsessed with this meal ever since i've made it for lunch probably a hundred times yes a hundred times in the past three weeks so i'm just cutting up some romaine lettuce to be the base of the salad and my kids all eat this sometimes they eat it deconstructed sometimes they eat it all mixed together in a salad depends on their mood i'm shredding up some lettuce again no brainer there very very simple meals the tacos were done from the oven and can i tell you please do not microwave these can i tell you that can i emphasize that enough do not microwave these <laughs> They taste so much better when you throw them in the oven and wait an extra 10 minutes. I drained a can of black beans. I also pick up from Costco, but who cares? You can get them anywhere. Or use whatever kind of beans that you like. You can also throw avocado on top of this salad or sour cream. However you like to eat your taco salad. Again, I like to keep things simple. So I just threw some cut up uh, tacos on mine with some cheese beans but my favorite part of this yes can't live without it is the taco bell hot sauce yes look at that pour <laughs> i had to do it in slow motion it looks so good it's so delicious i'm telling you i'm not even kidding i was obsessed for a while so i hope you try this out because it's very very simple why wouldn't you everybody loves taco salad and instead of living that instagram life <laughs> i am showing you what it actually looks like before it goes in my belly. Not very appetizing, but it sure is. Okay, tonight's dinner is another crock pot meal. I have to think about it, it's been a while. This is, I don't know the name of this, guys. None of these have names. Chicken and gravy and veggies. <laughs> That's the name of this meal. We start out with the crock pot. Um, I think I have chicken thighs tonight, yes. But you can use chicken breast or any kind of meat that you like, really, you know what I mean? Do you. So you need one packet of ranch seasoning, one packet of Italian dressing seasoning, and then one packet of gravy. I use chicken gravy, but you can use whatever gravy seasoning that you have or like. Um, the equivalent of one packet is three tablespoons if you have one of those large jars like I do. And then I typically add like a quarter cup to a half a cup of water just to get things moving along. And it also makes for more gravy, which who doesn't want more gravy for their dinner? <laughs> so next you're gonna throw in some, your chicken. Whatever chicken you have, mine is thawed out. It doesn't have to be thawed out. You can use frozen chicken. Most of the time I do because I don't really think about dinner very early. And I can, I even start my crock pot later in the day, like 1 p.m. And it works out just fine. Crank that on high, you know what I mean? <laughs> After a few hours, it will look like this. I'm just mixing that around. Look at all those seasonings. It looks so delicious. What am I making now? Oh, the veg. My favorite part, actually. So onions, dicing one up. I also have zucchini on this day. Love zucchini. 
I'm throwing some oil in a pan and cooking the onions, which is probably one of my favorite scents in the world. Cooking like cooked onions as they're cooking. Oh my gosh, I love it. So I have two zucchini here and I'm dicing that up. It's riveting, I know. I will tell you one of my favorite lunches to have during the day is just cut like cooked the you know what I'm making right now, zucchini, onion and black beans. Oh my gosh, so delicious, a meat-free meal. I did without the beans for just having a side dish. I just wanted to keep it veg since we had the meat going on. And I season it very simply with salt and pepper, but again, you can go ham. Put whatever seasonings that you want in there, whichever ones that you like. And I'm showing you the beans to remind me to tell you about the lunch that I like. Moving on, we're making mashed potatoes from a box. (laughs) Take help where you can get it because sometimes, you know, you just don't have time to make mashed potatoes from scratch. I'm taking the chicken out of the crock pot and I'm just cutting it into pieces. Nothing fancy, nothing crazy, just so I can plop it on my kids plates and they will eat it. Oh, look at that gravy, guys. Yes, please. I need a gravy boat is what I need and a ladle that won't scratch up my stuff. Okay, anyway, there is dinner all finished. I followed the directions on the box to make the potatoes. It's not rocket science. You can do it. You just add some water, milk, salt, tiny bit of butter. Delicious. It's actually my kid's favorite way to eat mashed potatoes. I don't know why. My homemade potatoes taste so much better. Okay, moving on to the next meal. This is the highlight for me, the kale, beans, and onions. Another take on like the zucchini, beans, and onions, but like with kale and a few more seasonings, we'll get there. It's delicious. I can't wait to share it with you. Again, since I was making the kale and fish, that was fish that you saw, I asked my kids what they wanted as a starch and they wanted these uh, the fro- frozen noodles. They enjoyed them so much in the soup, so I said, okay, but otherwise I would have cooked Uh, spaghetti noodles kind of like it looks like on the package my fish is basil pesto tilapia from again Costco take help where you can get it and I have a bundle of kale an onion and some butter beans oh my gosh if you guys have never had butter beans where have you been all your life they are so creamy and delicious I really urge you to pick some up next time you're at the grocery store if you've never had them before It's like a secret that no one talks about how wonderful butter beans are. Okay, so I threw the onions in the pan to saute while I am (laughs) de-veining the kale. I don't know what this is called. You just, oh, stem. You take the leaves off the stem because the stem is just too chewy and woody to eat. And then I just bundle mine up and cut it up into like, you know, bite-sized pieces the best I can because no one wants like a long stringy piece of kale, you know? I mean, maybe you do, maybe that's your thing. Go ahead, go for it. So I just wash mine off in a colander like this. I don't have a salad spinner either. There's a lot of kitchen utensils I'm missing. However, I do seem to make it work. (laughs) I'm draining the beans as well. And my kids, I should have opened two cans of these because they asked for more beans. They don't necessarily love the kale, but they sure do love the beans. So once your onions are sauteed, you throw the beans in there just for a minute or two just to get them warmed up, and then you throw the kale on top. Yes, I need a bigger pan. (laughs) I should have washed one or gotten one, but I thought, "Uh, this one's already dirty. I like to throw nutmeg on my kale. Oh my god, my mouth is watering. I want this right now. I also have a lemon. Uh, Anything with lemon in it just accelerates the flavor, accentuates and accelerates, why not? So I'm juicing one lemon right there in my handy dandy lemon juicer, and I'm throwing the lemon juice on top of that. If you don't like the tangy, is it tangy? The sourness of a lemon, don't add it. Add like, I don't know, a couple tablespoons of water just to get the kale to start wilting, you know? Oh, I love this. I will eat this for lunch, and I actually had it the other day for lunch (laughs) because it is so good. One of my favorites. Here's what it looks like all finished. I hope you guys enjoy this. Kale gets a bad rap, and I'm here to tell you it is delicious when it's prepared correctly slash if you like it. You know what I mean? Okay, so every Friday night, I guess that was Friday, we make brownies. It's our special little family thing that we do together. 
and Eleanor is helping me make the brownies. We use the Ghirardelli mix from, again, Costco, my favorite place to shop. And uh, we're just following the directions on the box, nothing too crazy. I think it's a third cup of water, one third cup of oil, and one egg. Eleanor does the heavy lifting around here. What's all over her shirt? Must have been the brownie mix. And of course, something I wish I could do right now because I'm pregnant and technically not supposed to is eat the batter. So of course I let my kids taste the batter. Look at the pure joy on her face. <laughs> but if she's getting salmonella, so are the rest of my kids. So <laughs> I let them in on the action too. Oh, it's just the best part of life right there, isn't it? That's what it looks like all finished. If you're on a diet, you're welcome right there. Oh my gosh, just brownies. Brownies make my week better. <laughs> That's why we make them on Friday. Something to look forward to just as a little treat for the fam. The next meal I will be sharing with you is a staple. Well, it should be a staple. It's like an American staple. Where did meatloaf originate from? I don't even know. I did not grow up eating meatloaf. I wish I did. This stuff is delicious. So tonight I'm making it a little bit differently than what I normally do. I thought I would jazz it up for you. Turns out that was a bad idea. <laughs> I didn't do it correctly. I thought, hmm, I watched Paula, Paula Dean make meatloaf once and she made it with onions and peppers. But guess what she did before she added it to the meat? Oh, she cooked it. I didn't. <laughs> Lesson learned. Next time I will. Normally I just, um, like the meatloaf seasoning packet that I'm adding right now, on the back of it, it has instructions. Normally I follow that. It's nothing fancy, but it sure does taste delicious. Tried and true right there. So I'm adding an egg, I don't know, probably like a half a cup of milk or something. I added a little more. I eyeball everything. No sense in dirtying a measuring cup when you've got a hand. <laughs> this is way too much breadcrumbs. But did I care? Heck no. I kept walking along and singing my song. Pete the Cat reference. Anyone get that? Anyone still here? <laughs> okay. I'm just... Oh, that looks gross. I should have fast forwarded that a little more for you. So mix in the meatloaf, my favorite part. Not really. And then I'm putting it in a pan. You can put it in a smaller pan, but I, f I find that when it's in a larger pan like this, it cooks a little faster, and that's what I like. I know some people put ketchup or tomato sauce or whatever on the top, not me. More breadcrumbs, please. <laughs> I have some potatoes that I'm cooking with the meatloaf. My favorite way to cook potatoes is in the oven, I love to roast them. My kids love it the best too. Kind of tastes like a French fry. So very simple. I throw it in. Tonight we had it with some carrots, olive oil, salt, and pepper. I think tonight it went a little fancy and even added some Italian seasoning for you here. Oh, somebody call the Food Network. <laughs> um, and then I zhuzh it all up. And the most important part, especially with the potatoes, is face them all like cut side to the pan so that that side gets nice and browned and crunchy, delicious. So I throw it in my oven for at like 400 degrees for, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. Perfect. Tonight, again, using the good old mashed potato from a box trick and making mashed potatoes because um, we had guests over this night and I realized I didn't have enough potatoes for everyone so I thought I would supplement with whatever mashed potatoes I could make from a box. You feel me? You improvise, okay? When you have guests and you need to stretch out your meals, you do what you can. Add a starch. <laughs> it fills everyone's bellies up. So this is what the potato should look like. Nice and crispy and delicious. I even like to eat it with um, Frank's Red Hot Sauce. It was too hot for my hands. <laughs> I threw it back on the tray. And it, this is the final meal. Not the best looking, but it sure did taste good. Slash, the green peppers were still kind of hard to bite into. But that's okay. But that's it for my week of dinners. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you got some ideas or inspiration or, you know, dinner recipes from this. When all else fails, I don't know. Order pizza. <laughs> that's, that's what my husband does. He's like, I'm cooking dinner tonight. We're having pizza. I'm like, oh, great. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, subscribe. Put a little more happy in your day. And I will see you next time. Bye.